Welcome back to Tony Dock Station. So, as you can see, I've absolutely destroyed and pulled out all of my control panels. So, it was heartbreaking um, after all the work I put in, but I've preserved the, uh, the panels um, so that they can just be plugged back in again if needs be. But all the, uh, all the wiring has been gutted. And the other thing that I've just done is um, gone round and cut all of my dropper feeds. What I have done is um, I've left the... You probably can't see very well. I can't put the torch on now. I've started pressing the cord. The um, uh, point motors, positive and negative DCC, have been left connected to the bus. But all the actual droppers for the rails been cut away from that bus um, so I'm going to do one of either two things I'm either going to have a, a separate basically two DCC buses running around the um, layout one for just the points and then one for the droppers um, which doesn't make too much sense to me um, or looking at the um, the point decoders I will run the because I think you've got the option to Run the positive and negative switches uh, and DCC power. Yeah, so, and then what I might do is just run, run them back to that, and then put, so I only have one DCC bus, which would be much more manageable. Um, but then it's just there for running the cable because that's obviously three core, not five core. Um, so that's that's sort of where I'm at at the moment. So, yep, it's started. Um, but it's, uh, it's got a long way to go yet. What I'm doing now is stripping out the um, existing bus wire. Um, the only things that are left connected are the uh, DCC feeds for the frog switch. So what I'm doing is I'm disconnecting that to put it all out uh, and I'm replacing it with um, these chop blocks, which I've seen a few people do. I, I can't give them credit because I can't remember who off the top of my head now. Um, just pull these droppers out of the way, so then it'll make it a bit easier to uh, connect bits and bobs up. So obviously the frog carries on and doesn't need to deal with, it's just the uh, switching and the DCC for the frog. Um, obviously I've done this one here as well. Um, and that cable's just popped out, so he's popped that back in, so that's the other thing, you've just got to check that he's a, a good connection. But obviously that one wasn't. So. I've done two, I've now got 24 more to go. So, and then I will have a clean um, underneath the baseboard, apart from the droppers, which will be relocated anyway. So that's why I've cut them all out, because um, most of these will be relocated. So I should just have um, points, uh, the existing uh, signals, and then whatever points can remain, and then the new ones that get put in. So yeah, that's that. Okay, so I've finally finished wiring in all 26 points to the chop box. I've uh, removed the DCC bus wire, and I'm left with now is just the accessory bus wire. Um, and the only things left coming through the board are the uh, existing droppers, which as I mentioned earlier will be removed or adapted. But this um, makes life a bit easier, um, especially if you need to replace the seats or the wiring just be chopped and changed and make the whole replacement process a lot simpler. So all of these are obviously wired up now to uh, chop blocks and then it will be exactly the same so the red, the black and the other red will go to the um, uh, and I think even these two here actually but they all go to the uh, capacitor uh, discharge unit slash X uh, point decoder um, so it should make life a bit easier for my own music. Um, but yeah so all of these are done now um, it's taken me quite a while and my hands are red raw from all using the screwdriver and all these so the next thing to do will be to run the uh, actual bus wire through which uh, I'll be doing uh, another day so see you in the short Okay, so what I thought I'd do at this point is talk through a little bit more in detail about how this digital system works because um, I know it's a lot of people 
commented on the first video and said that it um, appears overly complicated. So I'm going to try my best to explain how this works. Um, so I've drawn up uh, using my track diagram the block system, which I'll put a picture up on the screen in a minute. But first, to sort of explain as simple as I can how this uh, connects up. So, obviously I've got my DCC controller. Now, luckily, I'll be able to sort of talk through this and explain how this goes. So, think of this as your central hub. Um, I've got USB coming in from the computer, so think of this as the uh, DCC system where the power comes from and think of the computer as like an external controller, like a handset controller. So if you go back to sort of my um, uh, Dynamis system, you've got the, the hub and then the handset controller. So handset controller is sending data in to this to tell this what to send out to the track. <clears throat> so this then sends your DCC track output. So that connects to your main uh, power bus that runs around under the track. Simple so far. And then I'm basically sending the uh, decoder, the sorry, the um, detection decoders. This is uh, sort of the local net start system with an S88. And basically what that means is there's two different types of data it's sending. So I'll connect the local net decoder via a sort of network cable into this, and this is effectively sending track power through each of these 16 terminals. However, it's sending track power to designated parts of the track, and that's how the computer will know where the train is. So I'm sending generic power out to the bus where it can draw power, so mainly points and non-block parts of track will get their power from the main track output. Then the, the power for each block comes from these. So this is basically sending track power through the loco net system into these, and then this is distributing it out into 16 and then 17 to 32 different blocks. So, how does that work when we get it actually on the track? So, let's say for example, I've got this piece of track here, which then you have a point here. So let's just say from here to the end here is one block, which in my plan it is. So think of this as a block of track. And uh, you don't put blocks in points, and I'll come to that in a minute, but. So this part of track here, will have, say from feed one, we'll send a positive to the positive rail, and the negative comes back down through the bus and in to the negative of the uh, the main track output. So it's basically sending positive through the local net to the block, and then out the negative rail, back through and down to the yeah, track output uh, bus. <coughs> So then you might be thinking, well, if it's sending power to there, you know, technically it's, you know, if this wasn't uh, isolated here anyway, it would have, um, uh, say if this was just another piece of track, it would be sending power to there as well. So, yeah, you do isolate these. So, for example, say you've got a piece of track here, and you can see there is no break in this track, but let's just say to the left I want one block, and to the right I want one block. Well, obviously, if I send a dropper to there to say number two, the power will then, you know, carry on into this block here where number three, say, would be feeding this block. So you might be thinking, well, it's going to be drawing power on both, which it would do. So you then need to put a uh, break in the track. So I'll just Dremel through, but I'm only going to Dremel through the positive rail because the negative it doesn't particularly matter so obviously on my layout 
the rail closes to me is the negative. So the positive feed from the uh, block detector connects to here, obviously goes through the loco where it draws power and goes out the negative. And if it crosses here, then it takes the positive from this feed and the negative still goes back to the bus. So the negative rail doesn't need to be isolated. And I say it doesn't need to be, but some people may. It's not going to do any harm if you cut both pieces of track, but you're really just separating different blocks. So what I'll do now is I'll put on screen a picture of my block uh, system. And if you're looking at this now, you'll be able to see that I've got 32 different blocks. Um, and each one of those, the positive rail, would be separated where those blocks join. Um, I won't go into too much detail about the explanation of the blocks yet, but if I have finished, uh, I'll bring you back to the main video now. And you should be able to see how that sort of works. Now with, with points, these you don't want these to be in blocks, and you, you might have noticed that on the diagram all the, the blocks are sort of separated mainly by the points because it gets a bit complicated and the software doesn't like points being inside a block anyway and it's a, it's a good divider so say for example I've got a point here on this rail and a point there this piece of rail is one block and then the track to the left is a, is a separate block and the track to the right of that is again another separate block so I would have only one dropper coming in to feed this rail here um, and then the negative coming out again and I'll just make sure that I'll need to put some form of insulation so I might take this out put an insulating fish plate in there or just make sure there's a big enough break and again on this side make sure there's a break there so that it doesn't send the power over into the next block um, and then what I'll do is because there'll be a break I'll then put droppers on the point and they will then get uh, their power from the main track bus and not from the uh, block detection decoders uh, basically so these will connect to the main power bus the points so they've got their own separate power so that's in a very uh, brief uh, nutshell how the system sort of works in terms of uh, block detection it's very very crude and I hope that sort of clears up a little bit, but um, hopefully it will make sense as we go through and start building this as to how it looks. And it will be able to make more sense of the connections. Um, and what I'll do as well at some point is do a, a physical drawing and hopefully that might answer a few more questions and alleviate any other confusion. But it really isn't complicated. A lot of people are put off by it and I get it, I was too. But it, it isn't, it's just you've just got to know that for each section of track that is a block it just needs its own power from one of the uh, outputs here and um, the uh, I've just realized you see these C's I think they are the common returns actually so if it does if the, the negative doesn't necessarily come back to the track output it comes back through here I believe um, but again I'll cross that bridge when I get to it the, the concept is the same positive comes in there and the negative rail goes back to a, a common return effectively um, but yes yeah, so hopefully as I go through wiring this all up it will make a bit more sense um, and you'll see and uh, be able to understand that okay so here's just um, the first bit I've done so as you can see I put insulating rails on there uh, sorry insulating rail joiners to separate the point completely from that end of the track and at this end of the track I've also put insulating rail joins in there as well so this piece of track is completely isolated on its own um, and separate so that's hopefully makes it a bit more clearer okay so i've finished now separating all the blocks some of them i've done as i mentioned before like that with the insulating rails and others i've done for like example that point already had an insulating rail rather than ripping all the track up which is easy to take a dremel straight through now there are quite large gaps um, but i'm happy with that i mean on the camera that looks quite good but it also assists with the old clickety clack sound 
and uh, some areas um, have been broken like that and uh, there are some areas if I find one that I've got a complete break on both rails as well just where it was easier to go through so yeah all my track is exactly the same it's just now been broken up into sections um, as uh, mentioned on the diagram before the only change that I have made is that there was the middle track here between these two points on the diagram that was a block but as you can see it's actually very very tiny and almost, almost pointless having a block there but it is separated if need be but I probably won't end up using that as a block that's the only uh, only difference so now that the track is all uh, separated up um, yeah all I'm going to do now is run the main bus wire underneath and then start wiring so um, I'll probably leave this video here for now um, I think my last bit of rambling was quite long anyway um, but yeah so in summary it is really really simple just out of your power off uh, uh, controller sorry to your main bus which is that and then each section of track divvied up into what are called blocks is all isolated and then the positive feed comes from your block detection into the positive rail and then the negative goes out to the common return um, so the negatives don't have to all individually be uh, disconnected it's just the positives that's why some of them have only got the positive rail uh, cut the negative left as is um, and yeah that's so that's pretty much it so the next video will be sort of more in detail about the wiring um, but yeah so that's it for now thanks for watching and i will see you next time